I love that Candace Owens went on the Breakfast Club show. Man, this is long overdue. Long overdue. I kind of been waiting for this uh, interview. But, you know, Candace Owens, everywhere she goes, she speaks facts. And it's undeniable. Nobody can deny it. Just give the girl a chance to talk. I'm sorry, give the woman a chance to talk and just sit back and listen. Charlemagne's going to ask Candace Owens, what does black excellence mean to her? I want you to take a listen to her response because I think it's so eloquent. It's magnificent. Mm-hmm. What is Candace Owens' definition of black excellence? Oh, that's a very good question. You know, I, I think black excellence would just be excellence period because I, I always try to say the reason why you sh- we should remove ourselves from saying white excellence black excellence is because i've realized that there's been a power in people trying to segregate our minds in that way mm-hmm. you know excellence to me i think is independence i think it starts with independence of thought right actually challenging yourself and and challenging your beliefs and constantly re-examining them not thinking that you have it figured out but i i think that once we achieve higher education levels, and I'm talking about black people in mathematics, black literacy rate jumping to what it should be, which should be 100% if we're, if we're being honest, if you're sending somebody through the public education system, then we will start to see necessarily black people achieving more in our society. So I, I just personally think that we should be focusing on the black literacy rates, full stop, and also creating our own companies, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and not being having our voices controlled. So I went back into the beginning of the interview, about a minute in, Charlemagne asks Candace Owens, where did this all begin for you? How how did you get on this journey of, you know, um, basically about politics and and so outspoken and, you know, having podcasts and everything? I want you to listen to Candace Owens' answer uh, because I believe that a lot of people fall into this category and their lives sound so similar to how Candace Owens really got started on this conservative journey. Take a listen. Where did all of this begin for Candace Owens? You know, I feel like I have just a very regular story. Like I said, like I was born in New York, raised in Stanford. There was nothing, you know, particularly that stood out in my childhood that made me think that I was going to go into politics. I feel like I landed into politics kind of accidentally. Mm -hmm. And I say accidentally because I was, I thought I was a liberal my whole life. You know, I thought I was on the left my whole life. And really didn't pay attention to politics in any meaningful way. And then, you know, when Trump was running for office, I didn't want him to be elected. (laughs) I was like this, not because I thought he was a racist or a sexist, but just because I thought it was crazy to go from Obama, who had a certain decorum about him, Mm -hmm. to suddenly this sort of brash New Yorker. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was weird when all of a sudden the people that liked Trump you know, everyone thought he was like this iconic symbol, symbol of business. He was in rap songs. Everybody, you know, Trump was the status flipped on him in one second. I just didn't, I didn't buy the narrative mm-hmm. that he was in the media for three, four decades. And suddenly you wanted me to believe overnight that he was like Adolf Hitler and a racist. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't trust the media's narrative about him. And so I decided to actually listen to what he said. I still didn't vote for him in 2016, but I wanted to just listen to what he actually said. And then when I saw what he was saying versus how it was being reported, I just found it to be extremely dishonest. So I started researching more, learning more, and um, and then I got kind of angry, like just with the the lies, because I do think Black Americans are intentionally manipulated emotionally by the media, and Mm -hmm. you know, kind of kept dumb but emotional intentionally by the school system. And I started reading up on like Thomas Sowell, Shelby Steele, a bunch of Black scholars I originally had dismissed as Uncle Tom's and. You know, irony now is I get called up with Tom all the time. So <laughs> I got what was coming. But yeah, and, and then I realized that actually I've always been a conservative. I just didn't know it. And economically speaking, of course, the conservative arguments make the most sense. Does that bother you that people call you an Uncle Tom? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. First off, because if they read the book, Uncle Tom was the hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, <laughs> but also because I get it. You know, how can I fault people for something that I would have engaged in for the majority of my life? I thought the same thing about black conservatives. Like I thought it was this betrayal, but I never actually understood it. It was just an emotional response. And I think that kind of is, if you come out of the public school system, I can't imagine how you could be a black conservative when just the way that they even tell us our, our own history is just not true, you know? Absolutely amazing. Tell me that there's not a lot of that going on right now. Tell me that what she said, where is, where, where is, where is she lying? What is she lying about? Nothing. 
She's telling you the truth. When you do the research, when you read the books and stop listening to the mainstream liberal media, the fake news, when you stop listening to them and do your own research, you don't need anybody to tell you what to believe. Hello? When did you ever need that? Okay, so do your own research, come to your own conclusions, and then you can be free from all this nonsense. Because when people lie to you, there's a reason why they're lying to you. They want to keep you captive. A lot of people being lied to, they literally don't realize they're being lied to. They can't see what's going on. It just takes someone to step back. Don't look at petty arguments. He's racist. He's a sexist. If you're looking at the petty arguments, you're going to miss the big picture. Because you're never going to do the research. They're going to keep you emotionally strung out. So, kudos to Candace. Thank you for doing this interview, Candace. One of one of the superheroes of the world. Make all she's doing is making things make sense on a large platform, standing up against the Goliaths, the big corporations, you know, the big politicians controlling everything. They don't really have any control, guys. We do. Remember, we're we the people. We have the control. All right. So. Until the next time, peace.